No, no, Mary, I've made up my mind. I am not going into that studio and broadcast tonight. Oh, Jack, let's not stand out here in the hall arguing. Everybody's looking at us. Let them look. If you think I can do a show tonight after making a monkey out of myself on that Quiz Kids program, you're crazy. That was Wednesday. People have forgotten all about us. Oh, they have, eh? And besides, you're a comedian. You're not supposed to have any brains. <laughs> oh, you're just trying to make me feel good. There I was with those little kids, and I, I couldn't answer one question. And me, 34 years old. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't even answer a simple question like, where's the Taj Mahal? You could have built the Taj Mahal since you were 34. <laughs> Go ahead, rub it in. What a blunder. After all the years I spent in showbins, I had to stick my neck out and ruin everything. Oh, well... That's life for you. Pardon me, Mr. Benny. May I have your autograph? You don't want my autograph, girly. I'm washed up. <laughs> Thanks, just the same. Oh, Jack, you have to dramatize everything. I do, eh? Supposing you did miss on a few questions. You're not supposed to be Einstein. I'm not supposed to be Phil Harris, either. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. My, my cousin Boo Boo would have been as good as I was on that program. And all he knows is... I tell you, I tell you, Mary, I'm not going on the air tonight. Oh, for heaven's sake. If you're so ashamed of yourself, why don't you go out and join the Foreign Legion? You might think that's a gag, Mary, but the Foreign Legion isn't such a bad idea. I can't get over it. Imagine not getting that one question about the Taj Mahal. I knew the answer, but I opened my mouth and nothing came out. Not only that, a fly came in. <laughs> oh, well. Nothing I can do about it now. Jack! Jack, hurry up. The program starts in 30 seconds. Well, I won't be on it. Now, Jack Benny, stop acting like a big baby. He'll be right in, Don. Mary, I'm not going... Stop pulling me! Mary, let go my arm! Come on, Jack. Remember, you're a trooper. A what? Oh, yes, that's right. Once a trooper, always a trooper. The show must go on. Quiet, Jack. We're on the air. Okay. Gee, I hope I'm good tonight. <laughs> J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with The Vine Street Viggle. <laughs> Every housewife knows that in cooking and baking, you get the best results if you follow specific recipes instead of just guessing at the measurements and ingredients. And it certainly pays to be very specific, certainly pays to be very specific when you're ordering the foods that go into those recipes. That's why it's always a wise thing to ask for Jell-O whenever you're buying a gelatin dessert. If you ask for this swell dessert by name, you can be sure of getting every single time all those good things that Jell-O has come to stand for. You'll get Jell-O's brilliant colors that always look so gay and inviting. And you'll get Jell-O's grand, distinctive flavor. A flavor as refreshing as the juicy ripe fruit itself, the very ultimate in rich dessert enjoyment. So when you ask for any of those famous six delicious flavors, remember, ladies and gentlemen, to specify the name Jell-O. Jell-O is a trademark, the property of General Foods. And those big red letters on the box tell you that here's a mighty delightful treat. America's favorite gelatin dessert, Jello. The Vine Street Biggle, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we bring you one of the most brilliant minds in America today. 
A man whose meek and humble appearance conceals the brain of a genius. A man who appeared on the Quiz Kids program Wednesday night and didn't know the Taj Mahal from the Empire State Building, Jack Benny. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jalo again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I can't blame you for ribbing me tonight. Those quiz kids really gave me the old one, too. I was never so humiliated in my life. Well, I wouldn't take it so hard. After all, Jack, it's nothing to be ashamed of. No, it isn't, eh? Well, let me tell you something, Don. Everybody's snubbing me. I met Barney Dean on the street the other day, <laughs> and he wouldn't even speak to me. Barney Dean? Who's he? Just throw a cigar away in front of the Regent Hotel. You'll find out. <laughs> can't understand it. We've always been such good friends. Well, that's the way it goes. But I'm not complaining, Don. I had it coming to me after that showing I made Wednesday night. I can take it, though. You can take it? Yes. Then why did you try to hang yourself Thursday morning? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, I was hanging up a little laundry. I fell off the ladder and got tangled in the clothesline. That's all. Then explain that note you left. Farewell, cruel world. <laughs> oh, that must have fallen out of my scrapbook. That's a note I wrote one time when Clara Bow wouldn't go out with me. <laughs> she got mad because my garter got caught in her wristwatch during a Charleston contest. <laughs> we, we were disqualified. Anyway, Don, when Mary saw me, I was just hanging up a few socks. On Thursday? I thought you always did your washing on Monday. I couldn't do it Monday. I gave a reception for Lady Mendel. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Ask her to run the ringer? She came over to my house to meet the quiz kids. Then why didn't you do your laundry Tuesday? You know darn well that Tuesday is my day to go out and catch dogs in Beverly Hills. <laughs> I was elected to the office, and it's my duty. Now, oh. oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Say, I heard you on the quiz kids program last week. Oh, did you? Yeah, you sure were smart. Smart? I didn't even open my mouth. That's what I mean. Don't talk, brother, unless you've got a lawyer with you. <laughs> hmm. You're a little mixed up, Dennis, but thanks anyway. You know, Mr. Benny, when I was eight years old, I was just as bright as any one of those quiz kids. You were? Yeah. What happened to me? <laughs> I'm sure I don't know. Some say one thing and some say another. <laughs> well, don't... Don't worry about it. You've got a... Don't worry about it, Dennis. You've got a good voice. What more do you want? You know, Don, as a rule, I'm pretty hard-boiled, but even though those quiz kids made me look like a nickel, I can't help liking them. They're... They're so sweet and unspoiled. By the way, Jack, are they still living at your house? Uh, yes, Don, but they're leaving tonight. They better check out before six o'clock or they'll be hooked for another day. <laughs> Listen, Mary, at a lot of hotels, the guests have to, cut, uh, to, to be out by noon. So don't run down the Beverly Hills Tourist Haven. <laughs> Rotary Club every Wednesday. I thought the campfire girls met on Wednesday. <laughs> Only in the winter. <laughs> but honestly, fellas, those kids really made a hit with me. Gosh, they were wonderful company. I may be a bit sentimental, but I don't know. I'm going to miss the patter of little feet running around the house. It'll be so quiet. Why don't you put shoes on the mice? <laughs> oh, stop. No use being sentimental around here. Say, Dennis. Yes, please? As long as Phil isn't here yet, how about your song? What's it going to be? I'm going to sing a brand new number called Once Upon a Summertime. And this is the first time it's ever been done on the air. Well, a newie, eh? Huh? Let's hear it, Dennis. Okay. Hold it a minute. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Take it, Mary. Wait a minute, buddy. Here's a dime for you. Oh, goody. Now I get my curls out of hock. <laughs> That's all that zombie needs is curls. <laughs> Say, Jack, uh, this wire's from Waukegan. Oh, from home, eh? Yeah, it says, uh, you certainly disgraced the family on the Quiz Kids program. Personally, I'm disgusted with you. Disgusted with me? Who's that from? Cousin Boo-Boo. 
Well, how did Boo Boo ever find out about telegrams? He must have seen the picture, Western Union. Sing, Dennis. <laughs> The story I'm about to tell isn't very new. A lot of people know it well. Now I know it too. It's a load off my heart, nothing more. So don't stop me if you've heard this one before. Once upon a Summertime, not so long ago, there were two in a love affair. One of them didn't care. What happened, I'll never know. For once upon a winter time, this affair turned cold, and because of a change of heart. This story had to be told. It lasted through September, October, and November, and I still remember April, December. If I love some other time. I'll know what to do. I'll find someone who loves me through summer and winter time too. Through summer and winter time Uh, that was Once Upon a Summertime Written by Jack Brooks and Norman Barons And sung by Dennis Day And Dennis, that was not only a great number But your voice was really heavenly It was positively ethereal All right, Don Ethereal Oh, Jack, it's so ridiculous <laughs> Don, Dennis's voice was positively ethereal Now go ahead Oh, all right Ladies and gentlemen, the next time you're in the market for a real treat, be sure to buy a package of Jell-O. Keep going. Remember, folks, Jell-O is not ethereal, it's a dessert. <laughs> there. But what does it mean? I don't get it. Don, ethereal is a pun on the word cereal. Jell-O is not ethereal. Now continue, this is the cute part. Okay. Why don't you run down to your neighborhood grother and ask him for any one of the thick, delicious flavors? <laughs> Keep going, Don. Oh, this is so silly. <laughs> Don! So look for the big red letters on the box. <laughs> Don, you jack Benny, I'm going home. What? Well, I'll be darned, he left. I must have wounded his big fat vanity. So temperamental lately. Well, I don't blame him. Did you write that commercial, Jack? Yes. Well, I thoroughly stunk. <laughs> Mary, those are all clever ideas and should be tried out. You know, I got a marvelous one for next week. Look, as soon as Dennis, uh, Dennis finishes his song, we'll... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. What's the matter with Don? I just seen him walking down the hall. Oh, he's mad at me. The guy's screwy. I said hello to him and he says, I'm thick of you, too. <laughs> He, uh, he did, eh? Yeah, you know, the guy was lipsing. That's lisping. <laughs> Not lipsing. Well, he did it with his lips. <laughs> I don't care what he did it with, the word is lisping. All right, have it your way. Hiya, Mary. Hello, Phil. Say, Phil, how are you and the boys going over to the Paramount Theater? Mary, we're a riot. You ought to hear the laughs I get with my gags. I can imagine. Get this one, Jackson. When I first walk out on the stage, I say to my guitar player, I say, uh, Hey, Frankie, who was that lady I seen you with last night? Uh-huh. And before he can answer, I hit him right in the kitchen with a blueberry pie. <laughs> hmm.
Why, Phil Harris, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Throwing a pie in a guy's face is the oldest comedy bit in show business. With blueberry? You think of a custard. <laughs> Oh, I see. You, you modernized it, huh? You know, I can't imagine people laughing at that kind of stuff nowadays. Neither can I. Oh, you can't, eh? Why, after the first show, the manager came backstage and told me I was terrific. He said, uh, Harris, you ought to have your own radio program. He did, eh? Yeah, but don't worry, Jackson. I'm loyal. I'm with you for years. Well, thanks. Now, if I was loyal, you'd be all set. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Phil. I used to be in vaudeville, but I never stooped so low as to throw a pie at anybody. That's real hokum. What about that corny piece of business you used to do in your violin act? Corny piece of business? What was it, Mary? <laughs> Jack used to play by the waters of the Minnetonka, and for a finish, Barney Dean would squirt him in the face with a bottle of seltzer. <laughs> yeah, now the guy won't even speak to me. But, Mary, that was a very clever tie-in. You see, the song I was playing was about water. So Barney Dean squirted seltzer water on me. That was the idea. Uh, remember the time he played Among My Souvenirs and he took your watch? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was just for a gag. I got it back later. Anyway, I'll never forget one day when Bar... Come in. Hello, boss. Oh, hello, Rochester. I got the quiz kids out in the car. They're all ready to go to the station. Already? I didn't know it was that late. Say, Phil, the kids are going back to Chicago tonight, and I promised to take them down to the train. So you carry on with the show, will you? Okay. Hey, Frankie, go out and get a blueberry pie. <laughs> you don't have to do that here. Just play some numbers. Come on, Mary, you ride down with us. So long, Phil. See you later, Dennis. So long, Mr. Benny. The kids are in the car, eh, Rochester? Yes, sir. And, boss, listening to those kids talk is really an education. It certainly is. You know, I told them the salary you were paying me, and they took my weekly earnings, multiplied by 52, and gave me the square root of my annual income. <laughs> the uh, square root, eh? What was it? Believe me, boss, it ain't worth rooting. <laughs> That's too bad. Now, listen, Rochester. Oh, there you are, Mr. Benny. Yes? I've got your papers ready to sign. You leave in ten days. What? Oh, I meant to get in touch with you about that. I'm, I'm not going. Well, it's pretty late for that, Mr. Benny. I'm sorry. You'll have to forget the whole thing. Come on, Mary. Darn it, I meant to write him a letter. Who is that, Jack? The recruiting officer for the Foreign Legion. <laughs> <laughs> you know how depressed I was. It's all off now, though. I'm sure disappointed, boss. I got a gal in Morocco. <laughs> well, you weren't going. Well, there are the kids. Come on, Mary. Okay, Bo Jess. Hello, kids. Here's Uncle Jackie to take you to the train. Now, I'll sit up in front with Rochester. And, Mary, you get back there with the kids. Move over, Gerard. <laughs> Rochester, I don't like that horn. It sounds too cheap and tinny. Uh -huh. <laughs> that didn't come with the car. Where did we get that horn, Rochester? 
There ain't no hornets and no atomizers. <laughs> An atomizer? Yeah, don't you smell that tissue the more every time I squeeze it? Well, that's one on me. An atomizer for a horn. That's nothing. Our spare tire is a life preserver from the Albany night boat. <laughs> oh, yes, I fell overboard one night. It's lucky I had that on. Everything comfortable in the back seat, kids? Yes, yes Mr. Benny, Benny, it's fine. It's fine. Good, good. You know, Uncle Jackie is going to miss you, little rascals. But you certainly had me on the ropes last Wednesday night. We sure did. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Do you still feel like hanging yourself, Mr. Benny? <laughs> no, 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 I'm all right now. But you kids certainly made a monkey out of me. Gosh, I didn't know anything. Cousin Boo Boo is sick about it. <laughs> Never mind. Well, Claude, are, are you gonna miss California? I certainly am, Mr. Benny. I believe that Horace Greeley put it very succinctly when he said, go west, young man. Oh, he did, he put it very, yes, sir. <laughs> You know, uh, Horace Greeley was a great inventor. Why, Mr. Benny, Horace Greeley wasn't an inventor. Hmm. He was a newspaper editor. Oh, he was, eh? Well, if you're so smart, what paper? The New York Tribune from 1841 to 1872. Hmm. I'd give a $1,000 if I could learn to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Anyway, I wouldn't be surprised if Horace Greeley did invent something. As Dalamichi, he'll know. <laughs> All right, Gerard. 1841, I'll check on that. Hey, boss, there's Mr. Wilson walking down the street. Oh, yes, pull up alongside him. Okay. Oh, Don. Don, would you like to ride down at the station with us? I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> okay, okay. Keep going, Rochester. Poor guy, his tongue is still twisted. <laughs> well, Richard, you're rather quiet back there. Did you enjoy your visit with Uncle Jackie? Yes, Mr. Benny, but I'm sure sorry I didn't get to see Carmichael. Oh, oh, yes, I was quite anxious to see your polar bear, too. Me, too. Well, kid, you certainly missed a treat. Carmichael is just about the cutest thing you ever saw. Soft, white, silky fur, loves to play, and he's just as gentle as a lamb. Then what happened to the gas man? <laughs> you just drive the car. And Rochester, watch out. Watch out for that bump up ahead. The what? That bump. Oh, hang on, everybody. <laughs> Rochester, will you please watch where you're driving? You're at the wheel now. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, get over here. Mary, are the kids all right? You better call the roll. Okay. Claude? Here. Richard? Here. Gerard? I'm Gerard Darrow. I'm eight years old. I go to the Bradwell School. Don't give your billing. Just answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank heaven the kids are all right. Be careful now, Rochester. Yes, sir. Still don't like that horn. Why to get something unusual? Something that sounds different. Why don't you get your cousin Boo Boo to go? <laughs> Just keep my relatives out of this, will you? Well, kids, it won't be long now before you'll be on that choo choo. Choo choo? What's that? Oh, that's baby talk for locomotive. <laughs> Baby talk, eh? Hmm. I said choo-choo till I was 29 years old. <laughs> hmm. You didn't stop drooling till you were 30. <laughs> no quiet. Hey, Rochester, we're near the station, are we? Pretty soon, boss. Oh, Gerard, I think we ought to straighten things out with Mr. Benny now, don't you? Let Richard do it. Do what? What is it, Richard? Well, Mr. Benny, we've been living at your house and we haven't paid our bill yet. Your bill? Oh, forget it, kids. I, I I, don't want your money. But, Mr. Benny, we ought to pay you. We lived at your house two weeks. Two weeks and a day. <laughs> but forget it. <laughs> but forget it, kids. <laughs> it's all right with me. I enjoyed having you, really. 
But, Mr. Benny, if we went to a hotel, it would have cost us money, so why shouldn't you get it? Yeah, why should... Oh, forget <laughs> it. Forget it. You kids were my guests. Let it go at that. But, Mr. Benny... Watch out, Claude. This can't last forever. <laughs> Mary, you know very well I wouldn't accept any rent from these lovable children. But when they get to Chicago and they feel like sending me a little gift, <laughs> that's entirely up to them. <laughs> well, kids, here we are at the station. Pull up by the entrance, Rochester. Now, we haven't got much time. Pile out, kids. Gee, Come on. Gonna be funny. Funny. Watch your funny. step, kids. Watch it there. Take it easy. Say, boss, should I put my red cap on and take the bags in? <laughs> Not so loud. There are a lot of them standing around. Come on, kids. Come on, Mary. This way, kids. You just got time to make the train. Oh, look, there's Mr. Kelly, our quiz master. Yes, and there are the other kids. And there's Aunt Bessie. Wait, Mr. Oh. Rod. Don't run ahead. Everybody stick together. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Here we are on the choo-choo, as Mr. Benny puts it. <laughs> Gee, he's a nice man. And he didn't even charge us for those two weeks. He certainly fooled me. <laughs> Ready to go, boss? Yeah. Gee, I hated to see those kids leave. You know, Mary, they gotta be just like my own children. No kidding, I, I was crazy about him. Oh, stop blubbering. You'll see him again. Yes, but I was so used to playing with him and everything. I mean, what'll I do now? I mean, what'll I do when I come home evening? What, what'll I do in my spare time? Let's look for the gas main! <laughs> oh, quiet! Come on, let's go! Here's a dessert that's just as pretty as a picture. You'd be so proud of how good it looks that you'll probably want to put a frame around it and hang it on the kitchen wall for family and friends to admire. But putting it on the dining room table instead, you'll find it tastes just as good as it looks. The name of this dessert masterpiece is Banana and Raspberry Mold, a really different dessert that's not only easy to get, but easy to make. Simply dissolve one package of raspberry jello in two cups of hot water and chill until slightly thickened. Next, fold in two medium bananas sliced. Mold and chill until firm. Then garnish with sliced bananas and serve. And what a treat. A dessert that's as different as it is delicious. Incidentally, raspberry jello, like strawberry and cherry jello, has a new improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced. And that means it's better than ever. Discover its new goodness for yourself by making a swell dessert combination of luscious sliced bananas and rich red raspberry jello. Folks, the next time you buy Jell-O, get Jell-O pudding food. You'll find hey, it. hey, why all the whispering, Frank? Well, I'm not really whispering, Don. I I'm just holding myself in because if I let myself go when I talk about Jell-O puddings, I get so excited I just can't talk straight. Oh, now, now, Frank. Try it again now. Try it again. Go ahead. All right. Jell-O puddings, ladies and gentlemen, are made by the same folks who make Jell-O, and like Jell-O, they're downright swell. For smooth, creamy goodness, Jell-O puddings are simply unrivaled. They're easy to prepare, just as Jell-O is. And they sell for the same low Jell-O price. So try these rich, mellow puddings in three flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. There, I told you you could do it. Get Jell-O puddings tomorrow. Get Jell-O puddings to... Oh, we're a little late. Good night, folks. <laughs> Remember, next Sunday, April 27th, this program will come to you on Daylight Savings Time. Consult your local newspaper or movie and radio guide for current time in your community. It's the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>